And now uh, that we are back together here in Cambodia, I look forward to building uh, even stronger progress than we've already made. And I want to thank the Prime Minister of Co for Colombia's leadership and the ASEAN, as ASEAN chair. This is my first video update coming to you from Athens, Greece. And right behind me, you're probably wondering what is going on? Well, down that way is the Olympic Stadium. I was filming there a couple of uh, nights ago. I did a nighttime video and they were, they were doing some stuff there at the Olympic Stadium. And I was, uh, I was wondering what is, what is going on? What are they building over there? What are they preparing for? Well, it looks like that I forgot about the annual Athens Marathon that takes place around this time in November. We have a beautiful day here in Athens. So a lot of people came out to enjoy this event. And this is a real authentic marathon that, uh, that just took place. And I think it's wrapping up. Um, I believe that, uh, that most of the runners now are, are finishing up or trickling in slowly, slowly as this, uh, this marathon comes to a conclusion, comes to an end. So let's walk towards the stadium. Now there's gonna be music playing, so I don't know how I'm going to handle that, to be quite honest. Maybe I'm gonna stop talking and turn down the audio as the music plays, so I don't get any kind of copyright strikes or get this video taken down. So I'm not, I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna go about this, but I do wanna take everybody into the crowd as we talk about some news. And you saw the, uh, the opening video segment with Joe Bidenopoulos. Greece, his favorite son, and I'm sure that Joe Biden would be here in Athens if he wasn't in Cambodia or Colombia, <laughs> depending on uh, on what Joe Biden is uh, is thinking. But anyway, that was the opening segment from Joe Biden, and isn't it interesting how uh, how no one talks about Joe Biden and everything that. Uh, Let's see here. Hmm. Let me see here. One sec. Isn't it interesting how everyone doesn't talk about Biden's connections to Ukraine anymore? The Biden family and everything that went down in Ukraine. Oh. Yeah. Greek souvlaki. Oh, it looks so good. But yeah, you know, Burisma, Hunter. What was that prosecutor's name? Sh Shokin? Shokin? And Biden sitting there and, and telling all the other people in this, uh, what was it, like the Atlantic Council or something like that, some sort of conference there, and Biden sitting there saying, well, I went to Kiev and I told Poroshenko, if uh, you don't fire the prosecutor, you're not going to get the billion. And son of a gun, he fired the prosecutor. And everyone laughed, <laughs> you know. It was really funny because that was Biden, vice president for Obama. He was the de facto ruler of Ukraine during the Obama presidency. And he made, he made a ton of trips to Ukraine to oversee the, uh, the operation. Project Ukraine is what I like to call it, to be honest. Project Ukraine. And uh, no one talks about that. That, all of that narrative about Burisma and Hunter and fracking in the uh, fracking for oil in the east of, uh, of Ukraine and all of these things. Silence. Silence. Silent and silence. But uh, yeah, the corruption in and around Ukraine. FTX. FTX, since we're talking about corruption. This is my segue into FTX. <laughs> is the corruption from Biden in and around Ukraine is gonna give me my segue to FTX. So FTX is the crypto exchange that I talked about a couple of, uh, a couple of days ago and how this crypto exchange has gone from one of the hottest businesses, crypto businesses on the planet to bankrupt. And the founder and CEO of uh, FTX Sam Bankman-Fried, he went from being worth 16 billion to now being worth nothing, from what I understand. Okay. 
right. So now they're uh, they're finding out that FTX was uh, well, it was giving money to all kinds of different interesting causes, donations to all kinds of interesting parties, from the Democratic Party, forty million to uh, to the Democrats and to the Biden White House. It was giving a boatload of money to the Green Agenda, and of course, it was giving money to. Ukraine, big surprise to Ukraine as well. And the scheme for Ukraine was particularly interesting because what uh, FTX was doing is they partnered up with another crypto exchange in uh, Ukraine and they partnered up with the government, the, uh, the Ministry of Communication and Technology, something like that. And they created a donation platform so that people could donate their crypto and then the Ukraine government would convert that crypto to fiat. Awesome, huh? <laughs> and uh, all of a sudden, that crypto to fiat has gone missing. And now they're looking at uh, FTX's wallet, the, the wallet that FTX was using to manage their FTT token, manage donations, manage all the exchange pretty much. And they're investigating this wallet now. And, uh, and when I mean investigating, I don't mean the authorities. I mean just, you know, the, uh, the internet sleuths, you know, the, the, the very smart and intelligent people on the internet who are good at these, these, these things. And there are people who are very good at these things. They're looking into the FTT token and what they're finding out, this FTT wallet exchange and the token, they're finding out that anywhere between 97 million to 500 million has now just vanished it's just gone missing <laughs> man what a what a ponzi scheme this was what a ponzi scheme this was so you have basically you have an 8 billion hole in the company and you have hundreds of million which has just recently been been disappeared many people are saying this is hacked or this is this is something like that but it's been disappeared and you now have the uh this whole ukraine donation crypto thing as well which is money that people are wondering where did this money go because everyone thought I'm going to donate my my crypto to FTX and the Ukraine government. It's going to go to buy soldiers clothes and food and drones and stuff like that. What a scam. What a scam. If if you want to if you want to find the the nodes of corruption, like the nodes, the centers of corruption that the elites use, the causes and the nodes of corruption that the elites use to uh, to make a boatload of money and to scam people. Ukraine and the Green Agenda. That's all you need to know. Ukraine and the Green Agenda, the perfect scams. And now you know why they don't want the Ukraine conflict to end and why they want to keep this thing going, whether it's through a war, whether it's through a frozen war, whether it's through more funding, more weapons, whatever, it doesn't matter. They want to keep this thing going because this is good for business. Project Ukraine. Project Ukraine is good for business. So let's let's walk up. Let's walk up the uh, the little bridge here and to the other side. That's why they want to keep it going. It's good for the MIC, the military industrial complex, weapons uh, weapons dealers, the weapons black market. It's good for them as well. So that is why. They have to keep this thing going. That's why they have to take taxpayer money and funnel it to Alensky in order to keep the Alensky government propped up and alive so that then they can make their money with all these other schemes. And I think my channel was one of the only channels that actually talked about the Ukraine crowdfunding platform called United 24 or 24 United. 
whatever that thing was called, and how Mark Hamill was, uh, he was the drone ambassador, Luke Skywalker. He was the drone ambassador for United 24, and how they were getting money, how they were soliciting donations from people who, uh, who would then donate to this United 24 platform in Ukraine. And supposedly, the money would be used to buy drones and equipment and stuff like that for the army. And uh, people on this United 24 platform, they actually donated 100 million in crypto. <laughs> Man, if you, if you donated your crypto to Ukraine, if you actually believe that that money is going to be used to help the people of Ukraine, I've got a Greek marathon to sell you. I've got a Greek marathon to, to sell you if you believe that your cryptocurrency, whether it was through FTX or through United24, is being used to help the people of Ukraine. And Mark Hamill, Luke Skywalker, was bragging about how he he had raised something like two or four million in uh, in money to go to buying drones for uh, for Ukraine via United24. He was the drone ambassador. Boy, I hope this I hope this music doesn't get cut off. Cut, doesn't cut me off. Pretty cool. Let's walk down the stairs and we'll talk some more. We'll get to our next story. Pivot away from FTX. Bidenopolis. All right, so. FTX, FTX crypto donations. I was opening one of the taxi apps here in Greece, not Uber, just one of the, one of the standard like yellow cab taxi apps. And uh, after I put in my destination, it then asked me to donate a, a euro to uh, to Ukraine. <laughs> it's good for business. This this whole project Ukraine has been very very good for business for all of these guys. Oh boy! So let's uh, before I get to my clown world, we'll make this video a short one. Let's talk about blaming Russia. <laughs> you gotta blame Russia. So uh, Hunt, who is the, um, what is Hunt? He's the, he's the finance minister of Ukraine. Do I got that right? I believe I do got that right. He is the finance minister of, uh, of Ukraine. Finance minister of the UK, might as well be Ukraine. Anyway, he's Britain's finance minister. Um, he was giving an interview the other day and you know, they were asking him about the cost of living, inflation, the terrible state of the UK economy and how it's sinking into recession. And he said that, look, the UK economy is a mess. It's going to go into recession. There's no doubt about it. The only thing we can control now is how long and how, how deep the recession is going to be. And uh, then he went on to say that, you know, the recession is really not any of the of the political elite's fault, it's the fault of Putin. <laughs> and he actually said the recession is made in, in Russia. That was what he said, made in Russia. Recession in UK, made in Russia. He actually had the, the balls, the balls to pull that one, uh, to pull that one out. Because he feels that he can fool the people of Britain to actually believe that Putin's at fault for their uh, economic state. For which I always say, the real problem with the UK is not Putin. It was their support of the sanctions against Russia, which led to, uh, to their demise, to the political classes, economic demise. It was the sanctions that you put on Russia, not the invasion. Because as, as the United Kingdom, as Britain, what did you care what Russia is doing with Ukraine? It's none of your business, is it? Unless, of course, Britain has some sort of treaty with Ukraine or had some sort of treaty with Ukraine. 
or had some sort of alliance with Ukraine, or Ukraine was a member of NATO or something, but it wasn't and it isn't. So why did the UK feel, feel it had to step in and to destroy itself in order to, uh, to fight Russia? Why did it feel that need? And why did it feel that it needed to place sanctions that would be detrimental to its own economy in order to fight Russia? Well, they wanted regime change, we know that. And they thought that two, three weeks of sanctions would lead to regime change in Russia. And it didn't work out the way they were hoping. And the sanctions boomeranged back towards the United Kingdom, towards Europe, towards the collective West. But unfortunately, the elites in London, the political class, they have no reverse gear. And with each passing month, as they saw the sanctions chipping away at their own economy, instead of pulling back and reversing course and withdrawing the sanctions, what did they do? Kept on digging, kept on digging. They kept on digging that hole deeper and deeper and deeper. And now we're at the point, three prime ministers later, three prime ministers later, the UK is at the point where they have to explain themselves. And instead of taking responsibility and accountability, like most of us as adults would do, what does Hunt say? Made in Russia. Made in Russia, there you go. I'm absolved from all, uh, from all blame, from all responsibility. All of the, uh, the conservative government, we're, uh, we're not at fault. It's all Putin's, Putin's uh, fault. Made in Russia, he said. And the Greek prime minister, Mitsotakis, he was giving an interview to one of the Greek mainstream media channels called Antenna. And they pressed him about the economic state of Greece, which is getting worse every single day. The cost of living, the, the energy prices, all of it. The same old... Uh, the same song and dance for all of Europe, right? Cost of living, energy, food, inflation, all of it. And uh, they actually told Mitsudakis, the prime minister of Greece, they said, look, some political parties, the smaller political parties, nevertheless, some political parties are saying that this is the Mitsudakis, the prime minister of Greece. This is his tax, this is his price hike. They're actually calling it, branding it the Mitsudakis price hike. And that's what they were kind of, you know, running on. That's what they were campaigning on, the uh, smaller parties. And what did the prime minister of Greece say? He told the interviewer, he said, no, 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 no. This is not my fault. Take a guess whose fault it, it, it all was. You guessed it. <laughs> it's Putin's fault, of course. That's what he said. He said what the Greeks are going through and what they're about to go through with this cost of living crisis is the Putin price hike. It's Putin's fault, not mine. It's Putin's invasion of Ukraine. That's what did this. Really? Maybe, maybe it has something to do with the sanctions that you went along with. Maybe it's the fact that uh, the Greek government actually listened to the, uh, to the policy, actually followed the policy of van der Krasi went along with van der Krasi's crazy idea to sanction Russia and shame on Greece for, uh, for going along with the sanctions and then for trying to blame it on Putin, trying to blame it on Russia. When uh, everybody knows, everybody here in Greece understands that it was the sanctions that we placed against Russia. Everyone in the European Union that they placed against Russia that has caused the problems that we are now beginning to, uh, to live with and to understand, because a lot of the people here are still not, they're just now coming to grips with, uh, with what lies ahead with regards to, uh, to inflation and the cost of living and, and, and all of these things. And uh, with each passing month, it's gonna get worse and worse and people are gonna get angrier and angrier and they're gonna hit the streets and the government here, they have to explain themselves. And once again, instead of taking accountability and responsibility, they just follow the EU Collective West party line, which is just blame it on Putin. Why? 
because you got to keep this thing going, man. You got to keep it going because we're all making bank. We're all making a lot of money. The political class, the oligarchs, they're all making a lot of money from this. Donate one dollar. Donate one dollar to Ukraine. Right? They're all making money. Send your crypto over to Alensky, to United24. It's going to go to good use, really. Trust me. Trust me, your crypto is safe with us. It's safe with uh, Adestovich and Delensky. <laughs> really, it is. Trust us. <laughs> Trust us. We're going to take good care of your crypto. Sam Bankman Freed, <laughs> we're going to take real good care of your crypto. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. You know, I remember we were doing Duran videos, me and Alexander, like a year ago. And we were talking about all the money that had been funneled into Ukraine from the European Union. This is way before the special military operation and all of this stuff. And uh, I asked Alexander, how much money do you think the European Union had funneled into Ukraine? Just the European Union over the past eight years during the, from the Maidan up until like 2021. And Alexander was like, hmm, the European Union, the IMF, probably around 40 billion, but no one noticed. No one, no, no one understood, no one cared because this was, this was all being done on the down low. No one was paying attention. Just like no one was paying attention to, to Hunter and all the trips he was making or Biden. No one was paying attention to all of that stuff. But you know, it was, it was all going through Ukraine. And eventually Putin, put a stop to it with his uh with his smo he ruined the game and they're never going to forgive him for that they are never going to forgive him for that you think clinton had something good going in haiti i mean the clinton machine they had they had a real good uh a real good grift going on in haiti remember those days and they were making tons of money uh, magnify that by a hundred x and you've got Ukraine over the last eight years and now and now well now we're talking real money we're not talking 20 30 40 billion now we're talking 100 billion 200 billion 300 billion that's what they've got their their uh, their sights on we're talking big bucks big big cash anyway I will leave the video there and it's this great just walking empty streets fantastic let's uh do a clown world and we'll finish this off since we're talking about a little bit about russia and we talked about sanctions how about russia sanctioning u.s politicians well russia has sanctioned a bunch of u.s politicians the bidens the clintons all these people they have sanctioned them they can't travel to russia and this was done a while ago, I would say like maybe four or five months ago, in retaliation for the sanctions that the collective West placed on Russian politicians and officials. Well, the Russians came out with another list of, uh, of people that they're sanctioning in the U.S. political class. And this time, the Russians are now placing sanctions, i.e. you can't travel to Russia, on Bernie Sanders, who who has traveled to Russia. He was, in, uh, he was in the Soviet Union many times, I believe. So maybe that one will hurt. <laughs> Bernie Sanders cannot travel to, to Russia. Uh, Elizabeth Warren has been sanctioned. She cannot travel to Russia either. And uh, the Biden family, the Biden family has been sanctioned. Not just Hunter and Joe, but they got all of Biden's siblings, sister, brother, all of them. They can't travel to Russia. But the best one, the best one I've left for last. <laughs> and uh, this is the best one. They've sanctioned Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi, right? She can't travel to Russia. But now the Kremlin has decided to sanction Paul Pelosi. <laughs> no more Russia for Paul Pelosi. <laughs> he can't travel to Russia. So no... Uh, no stories of Pelosi in a hotel room in his underwear <laughs> and stuff like that. 
<laughs> with, <laughs> with, with hammers and <laughs> who knows. I'm not even going to go there. I'm not even going to go there. It's terrible what happened to Paul Pelosi. It's terrible what happened to him. But uh, that's what Russia did. They have sanctioned all of these people. And that's the video, everybody. I'm at the end of the streets here in Athens, Greece. And uh, I will... Um, I will end the video there. Yeah. The Duran.locals.com. The Duran shop. 10% off. Use the code good day. We are on Rockfin as well. Check out Alexandra's channel. Check out the Duran's channel on all the platforms, including Telegram. And uh, what else? And that's it. Take care.